the hero hunter, the scourge of monsters and heroes alike. In fact, he was such a menace that Saitama himself had to get serious. Now on to how this is even possible. Two things. One, being adaptable, and being chosen explicitly by God. Interestingly, another strong character can be said to be similarly strong. His opponent is similarly adapted, but it's not from being boosted by God. Kojiro is adaptable taken to its extreme, being one of the strongest gods in Record of Ragnarok with just two swords. What a fight break out between these pinnacles of adaptation. Let's find out. First, break down how strong Garo is. For this video, we'll be using Cosmic Fear Garo, the strongest form. This form boasts tremendous speed, strength, and hacks. Most of his powers is from his ability to adapt and copy his opponent's moves, as well as the power God gives him. Physically, he's a beast boasting such feats as punching a hole in space, destroying the stars within the holes, as well as keeping up blow for blow with Saitama, aka THE One Punch Man. He also ended up copying Saitama's serious punch, which resulted in the aforementioned hole in space. Perhaps his greatest feat of strength is creating a gamma ray burst, which is known as the most powerful class of explosions in the universe by NASA. An average gamma ray burst releases 10 to the 44th joules of energy, aka the total amount of energy the sun will release in its entire lifetime. To put this into perspective, a SAR Bomba releases about 2 with 17 zeros after it jewels. It would take about 4 with 26 zeros after a SAR Bomba all at once to equal a gamma ray burst. This gamma ray burst would also release incomprehensible amounts of radiation. Next up is speed. I present to you the One Punch Man, Saitama and Garo jump around Io Calc made by Kachon123. In this calc, Kachon uses the diameter of the moon Io and pixel measurements to determine the distance that Saitama and Garo travel. He then proposes three frames we could use. For this video, we're gonna use the first one, which places him at 617 times the speed of light. So for speed and strength, Garo is already set. But what about hacks? He's not lacking in that department either. Starting off with the elephant in the room, he understands the flow of all energy and the behavior of all forces in the universe. With this, he instantly understands how his opponent works, their hacks, basically everything. This alone is an extremely impressive ability, but he has more. As previously stated, he can copy any move and even push it farther than the original. This copy ability gives him access to the portals he has copied, further increasing his mobility options. All in all, Garo is an absolute beast with feats to back it up. How does Kojiro measure up in comparison? Kojiro is Three's greatest loser, one who continues to get stronger even after losing again and again, seeking stronger and stronger opponents, and losing every time. After losing time and time again, Kojiro developed a way to beat his opponents. He would construct a perfect one-to-one -one of his opponent, and fight that opponent in his head thousands of times to learn how to beat them. His ability is called Senjo Muso, and is the anticipation and adaptation to an enemy he has not even fought yet. Taken to its extreme, Senju Muso allowed Kojiro to scan all of existence at once, stealing the techniques of the gods, similar to Garo's cosmic knowledge. This, matched with his weapon, was what allowed him to kill Poseidon. Speaking of his weapon, let's talk about it. Kojiro possesses a Volunder, a weapon made by the Valkyrie matching emotions with the human and turning themselves into a divine weapon. In the context of Versus Garo, who has been blessed by the gods of One Punch Man, I will say that the sword made by Valkyrie Hurris would interact with Garo in a similar way to how an actual divine weapon in Overlander would interact. Both can attack and block each other without a clear advantage to either. I consider Garo to be the closest thing to a divine weapon in One Punch Man, as he is blessed by God and even given attack to use from God. So I think it works here. This means that Garo can't just snap Kojiro's sword in half, and Kojiro can block incoming attacks. It's important to note the distinction, however. Garo's strength is in his entire body, while Kojiro is only protected by his blade. I consider any attack from his sword on Garo's body to be equivalent of two divine weapons clashing, meaning that for Garo, he is essentially always blocking even without his fists raised. This is not the case for Kojiro. Divine weapons easily pierce through him. In this fight, Kojiro has a natural disadvantage for this reason. Also, his sword can split into two, but it doesn't matter at all. He could still come back, though. So let's look at his speed. 
Kojiro has only one speed feat, and it's based on being faster than Poseidon at the end of his fight. You can calc Poseidon's speed based on the dome of after images shown here. According to Gianni Smag, using pixel scaling we can determine that Poseidon must have been moving about twice the speed of light for this feat. Using this as his speed, you can see that Kojiro should be around double that, as he was much faster than Poseidon at the end, placing him at four times the speed of light. But this is unfortunate, Garo is over a hundred times faster than Kojiro. The fight between them starts, and even if Kojiro can fight Garo in his head and scan all of reality, it doesn't matter. Garo just puts a hole in him, Garo wins. That's just a boring ending though, so I'm going to be biased and change the rules after going through all that. Kojiro vs Garo, both the same speed. Let's just say they both move at the speed of light. Surely now Kojiro has a chance to adapt, and it'll be a cool fight to see if he can copy other's abilities better. Oh wait, Kojiro has no defense against radiation. Garo has multiple attacks that release enough radiation to kill any human within seconds, such as nuclear fission. Even if Kojiro does every move perfectly and can block everything, he still dies to radiation seconds later. What the hell, is there no scenario where it's an interesting fight between Kojiro versus Garo? What if we made Kojiro immune to all radiation? Okay, new rules. Garo versus Kojiro, but Kojiro is immune to radiation and now they are the same speed too. Surely now Kojiro has a chance. Let's see, the fight starts, Kojiro simulates Garo in his head, Garo uses gamma ray bursts and creates a black hole. Wait, what? Garo creates a black hole? That's right. Gamma ray bursts are the birth of every black hole ever. Forgot to mention that. What defense against a black hole does Kojiro have again? Two swords. Right, and even beating the speed of light stuff isn't enough, black holes suck in light as well. They keep going on and on, adding new rules to let Kojiro have a chance, but I think we all get it now. In a fight between Garo and Kojiro, Garo absolutely demolishes. 